Okay, this is the uh, Unity 61E Teardown Review. This meter has got lots of buzz on the internet. Uh, it's around $60 when you import it uh, from uh, China off eBay. And uh, for that price, there's actually uh, a whole bunch of uh, decent capabilities. Uh, the first thing you note is it's a 22,000 count DMM. And what that means uh, you know, for practical measurements is you're getting an extra digit of resolution. That's very handy. I'm always reviewing these meters with the eye towards electronics design. Um, and that's a very useful thing to see how. Uh, it's a true RMS meter, so if you're trying to measure uh, AC waveforms for distorted, of course, you'll get a, a more accurate measurement. Uh, now, like a lot of Unity meters in this sort of range, uh, they have an optical port in the back, and they provide you with a serial cable for a personal computer. And that basically allows this meter to be used as a uh, low-end data logger, uh, which is quite nice. Um, and the fourth thing that's uh, nice about this meter is actually it's very accurate. Uh, some of the ranges are 0.1%, uh, which is... Uh, very good indeed for a 60 dollar meter. Now there are a couple things on the meter which uh, aren't as good. Uh, the voltage rating for current measurements is only 250 volts. So we'll open the meter up and see why that is. That's a reasonably low voltage. Uh, and one thing that's not on the meter is a uh, the ability to do temperature sensing. However, why don't we go around the dial here and just see what uh, the meter does provide. a voltage measurement range, uh, both AC and DC volts. Uh, there's a no millivolt range, and that's actually very useful for electronics design. Uh, the, of course, the resistance, the ability to measure resistance, there's a diode checker and continuity. Nothing too remarkable, but obviously uh, pretty critical for a multimeter. Uh, a capacitance meter, again, this is really speaking towards a decent meter for electronics work. A, a frequency counter, now it's a um, only a five-digit meter, of course, so it's not super accurate, but uh, definitely you could probably find use for it. And then three ranges in the current, uh, including the microamp and milliamp range, and those are pretty uh, pretty helpful for electronics design. So, uh, looks really promising. Uh, okay, uh, so the meter is obviously uh, in parallel with another meter here, uh, the Fluke 17B. This is a 22,000 count meter, and the Fluke's a uh, 4,000 count meter. Uh, they're both in parallel, and I've got them connected to a power supply. And uh, I'm doing that so I can show how you get an extra digit of uh, resolution on the meter. Uh, for example, here we have it uh, running, it's obviously declaring 15.900 volts, and then of course the fluke is uh, 15.88. Uh, you can see, of course, you're basically getting an extra degree of, uh, an extra digit of resolution. So um, that can be handy if you're doing really precise work and you need to get that. You can see how the fluke uh, is dropping the information. Now, it's 22,000 counts because as I get close to 22,000, eventually you can see the meter. Um, can no longer store the extra digits and it goes back and has the same accuracy. So that's what the number 22,000 is all about. Okay, so before we put any piece of test and measurement gear into service, uh, whether it's a hobbyist or actually in a commercial setting, you should really make sure it works well. Now, obviously, if you're listening to a review on a $60 uh, multimeter, you're probably um, not looking towards having a multi-thousand dollar uh, reference source on your bench. Um, now, Great fortune in the last few years is uh, there's been the emergence of a very inexpensive checker. Uh, this is called the uh, DMM check from VoltageStandard.com. Uh, it's a great little unit to, uh, to take a point check to make sure a new meter is uh, in spec. And in fact, actually, you can use it periodically just to make sure a meter is not drifting off. So, Okay, so first test, uh, DC voltage. The reference source is a 5-volt output. Uh, plus or minus 0.01% uh, and the meter's accuracy is 0.1%. So our reference standard is 10 times better than what we're trying to measure. So it's good. Uh, let's turn it on and uh, we'll see that uh, it there's 4.992 volts. So, okay, good. That's within the specs because it'd be um, plus or minus 0 0.005 volts uh, plus or minus 5 counts. So this uh, meter is coming in uh, matching its accuracy. Um, now, I won't go through all the ranges, uh, but I will tell you that for everything I could measure with the DMM check, the meter ma matched its capabilities. Um, so that's good. So the out-of-box accuracy uh, that uh, Unity is claiming seems to be uh, uh, standing up to uh, inspections. Let's take a look at the data logging uh, capabilities of the meter. Now, um, I've slid off a, a little uh, protective shield that's uh, on the meter. Uh, UET seems to be uh, pretty universal in, in this uh, construction, but this... This little thing slides on and off, and then uh, the cable uh, slides in. Now, it's optically isolated, of course. That's really good because that provides a, a good electrical uh, um, isolation to your computer. Now, you can see the end of the cable that they provided goes into a standard serial port. Uh, unfortunately, of course, serial ports have been obsolete on, on personal computers for uh, coming on seven, eight years, probably. Um, and now, there are adapters, uh, USB to serial adapters, but certainly uh, they've had a history of being somewhat problematic. 
Uh, if you uh, do have that kind of problem, uh, you can actually purchase quite easily uh, on the web the, the USB version. You can see it here. Uh, I purchased it separately for uh, a, a meter I had purchased earlier from UNIT. Um, and this actually does seem to work very, very reliably. So it uh, might be one thing to consider because, uh, honestly, the cost of this cable is actually uh, uh, the same as the cost of purchasing an adapter that uh, goes between those two standards. Okay, so here's the GUI. Uh, it seems to run under Windows quite well. Uh, it was no problem installing it. Uh, it's got two buttons for connections. One is a serial port connection, and one, of course, is a USB connection. Now, I'm using the USB cable, uh, so I just uh, press on it. Uh, the meter starts to uh, record instantly. Uh, it looks like it's recording uh, 10 second intervals. We'll just put it down to its uh, most uh, most sensitive range is once a second. And the, the voltage is crazy on here. You can see, of course, now it's drawing a graph of the, the measurements as well. I'm actually feeding the meter uh, at one tenth of a, a hertz a signal so it actually uh, can capture that. I mean, clearly, this is obviously not an oscilloscope, it's, uh, it's a very uh, it's a data logger, but uh, quite capable. Lots and lots of physical phenomena happen in the hertz range. So, um, it's also, you can see there's a pass fail function here, so you can program it if you're trying to test a batch of components or a batch of voltages or, or whatever have you. We have the meter obviously on the continuity test, and what happens, of course, when you put the leads together, it beeps. Um, now, one thing you always want to check on a continuity uh, tester is that it's super sensitive because you don't want something which takes uh, a few uh, seconds to decide whether there's continuity. Now, this meter is good. Uh, you can sort of very gently touch the probe together, and it immediately notices that there's continuity. So, uh, solid. This is definitely uh, working well. Okay, a lot of text in the bottom here, and uh, some of it's quite interesting, actually. I think a lot of it results in uh, some cost savings that UNIT is trying to make. On the left-hand side, you can see there's two um, meter jacks for the uh, the milliamp uh, amp setting. And below that, you can see that the voltage rating is uh, 250 volts for the current side. On the, the right-hand side, of course, you can see the, the cat rating for the voltage measurements, uh, 600 or 1,000 volts. Now, let's take a look at the back of the unit here. Okay, so the uh, unit is opened up here, and we can see two white uh, fuses. They're ceramic fuses, of course, so one for the lower ampere range and one for the higher. You can also see some text, uh, BS1362. That stands for British Standard. Um, in the United Kingdom, all plugs basically need to have a fuse in them, and uh, this, that's the British standard. So what UNIT is using is actually appliance fuses uh, in their meter, and that's why at the front there, that was that rating of 250 volts. Now, uh, if you were to compare and contrast uh, that approach with, say, uh, a Fluke meter, so Fluke 17B, um, they too, of course, have fuses, but um, there are a different class of fuses, more perhaps rated for um, test and measurement uses. Uh, they are rated to a thousand volts, um, which is a little more consistent for the overall rating of this meter. Now, the other thing you can see here, and that's one thing that was sort of seen, if you look at uh, a video I did on the uh, 61C, you can see some larger footprints here, and uh, I believe those are actually sized such that you could put an HRC fuse uh, into those locations. Now, uh, one uh, viewer of the UNIT 61C video uh, actually contacted me and he opened up his meter. He bought one uh, from uh, Germany, uh, I think locally in Germany. And uh, UNIT had uh, shipped it with uh, a larger fuse, which looked like the HRC fuse we just saw on that fluke there. So um, if you buy this meter uh, out of uh, eBay like I did straight from uh, a Chinese distributor, uh, it's likely that you're going to get the, the BS1362 uh, fuse and, of course, that 250 volt rating. So in terms of build quality, um, the soldering seems like it's fairly well in process and looks fairly decent. There's a reasonable amount of solder volume in all the surface mount parts. All the joints look uh, uh, quite good. That's important because obviously if you're soldering uh, processes out of spec, uh, you have a chance of uh, not putting enough solder on your components, uh, which would of course then eventually result in uh, maybe a disconnection in the meter uh, malfunctioning. The only exception to that in this meter here is that the through-hole parts, I think they're probably paste printed rather than selectively waved. Um, and what that means here is a really good example up here, there's a capacitor. Uh, and you can see that when the capacitor uh, leads go through the circuit board, uh, there's not, uh, this component here, there's not a lot of uh, solder volume going through the uh, via. And uh, that's unfortunate because it's, it's a slightly weaker solder joint. Uh, you can also see, unfortunately, this particular component doesn't look like it really fits that well. I think they had some Z-height problems, it gets squished down. And you sort of get exposed leads sort of uh, a little bit too close for comfort on pads. So 
Uh, that's actually the only thing you could really comment uh, to the negative on the meter, though. Uh, up here you can see uh, a light emitting diode. Uh, that's uh, for the uh, serial communication port back to the computer. Um, obviously you want to uh, optically isolate or electrically isolate uh, the um, computer from your meter because obviously for measuring high voltages uh, you uh, don't want to necessarily connect them to the mains ground which the PC would have on its uh, serial shell. So a, a good safety move obviously. Uh, you can see uh, as you look down on the sides here, these holes, there's a, a golden sheen to them. It looks like it's an Enig uh, plating, that's essentially a gold plated uh, circuit board. So, uh, as you can imagine, uh, gold plated circuit boards uh, offer fairly decent soldering uh, characteristics. Um, the uh, potentiometers, uh, now there's no service manual for the, the meter uh, that I can find, but uh, as with any uh, Unity meter that I seem to have torn down, the uh, the data sheet for the actual controller can be found usually on the web, um, and it doesn't take a lot of effort to actually sort down what these potentiometers do. Uh, they are uh, not locked down with any sort of uh, nail polish or epoxy or any sort of uh, thing which would prevent the, uh, the potentiometers from moving, so um, that's a pretty minor quibble. Uh, you can see uh, this is a spring here, of course. It'll, it conducts to some uh, shielding on the back of the meter here. Um, and that's important if you're in a high EM field environment. You, of course, don't want the, the meter misreading because of uh, stray fields. Yeah, you can even see there's actually some of it wrapped around the front as well. So, uh, again, it tells me that you know someone's taken a, a fair bit of thought, actually, in this meter. It's, although it's not an, not an extraordinarily expensive meter, um, it's got some nice attributes, uh, which tells me that somebody uh, did give some thought uh, to the construction of the meter. Um, down here, for example, as well, uh, you can see there's a cutout. Uh, essentially, uh, circuit boards have a finite conductivity, but uh, if you really want to make sure something gets isolated, you can put a slot in the circuit board. There's uh, another example up uh, here. Uh, Air is obviously a, a, better uh, a better insulator than uh, circuit board material, so uh, you often see slots there. Again, it tells me that somebody's uh, you know, taking some care with the, the design of this meter. Down here we have the standard uh, jack that seems on the UNI-T meter. Uh, they come through a barrel and there's a, a tap that goes off the circuit board. That's actually good because that strain relieves the circuit uh, board from the, the jack a little bit. Uh, you obviously uh, get a lot of mechanical force as you drive home uh, a, a lead and that can uh, sometimes fracture soda joints. So uh, UNI-T's approach offers some strain relief. In, in terms of foreign object ingestion, uh, obviously if you drop an electronic component in your meter, you don't want that meter to um, uh, malfunction with that component rattling around in it. Uh, this little post back here essentially seals off uh, the uh, the jack here, so foreign object in ingestion is a little bit more difficult. Some of the extremely low end meters that I've taken a peek at, uh, unfortunately, aren't, aren't too um, aren't too sensitive to that. So uh, Unity has made some provisions there. Uh, other than that, actually, there's really not much to comment. Ah, here's the uh, here's the UL number. Uh, you can actually uh, Google that on the web. You look for the UL database. You can actually Google this number, and actually you'll find the raw board circuit vendor. Uh, no surprise, they're actually, of course, in China. Okay, that was the uh, Unity UT61E.